Absolutely. And it's been interesting, Matt, frankly, because we know just talking about geopolitics now, as you know, we're talking about the impact that geopolitics and the security of this region, of course, has on business sentiment. I had a chance to catch up with several business leaders as well as foreign ministers. But one of the key takeaways, of course, was whether or not the private sector in this region has really gotten back on track. Let's listen in to what the MENA region's head of Deutsche Bank had to say. The private sector um, uh, across the region, frankly, is still um, sentiment-wise, uh, not feeling too positive. That said, there is a widespread feeling at the moment um, that 2019 will be a genuine inflection point. Uh, the major uh, states in the region are hopefully beginning to spend. Uh, tender projects and uh, make payments on uh, payables to contractors, vendors, and suppliers to governments. And that should help the sentiment. And hopefully that will translate into uh, a more robust uh, economic activity in the region. So essentially, they're the private sector, uh, perhaps hopeful that this year is going to be a little bit better for them. The last several years, of course, have a result of lower oil prices, but also, of course, government spending cuts and, and that kind of thing have really, really weighed on investor sentiment, not the least of which, of course, being the geopolitics here about what's been happening in Saudi Arabia, things that have been happening in Lebanon as well. Um, the UAE continued to be, as you know, a, a bit of an island of stability, at least with regards to the politics, but at the same time, a general feeling of depression among the private sector investors that we speak to now. One of the things that seemed to be a bit of a bright spot coming out of uh, the conversations that we had here over the weekend was the fact that whether you're uh, sitting in Lebanon or Egypt, uh, Israel as well, you're getting this new kind of um, feeling of general euphoria considering you're able to tap into the energy resources of the Eastern Mediterranean bloc. I had the chance to catch up with Egypt's energy minister, and I asked him how this is changing the game. Listen in. We cannot deny definitely that if we are able to have our uh, own energy, this will uh, give us some, not independence, let us say some strength, some edge. The destiny of each country is uh, uh, at its own uh, uh, stake and uh, own decision. However, uh, you get to capitalize on what you have. So if we have the resource, the gas, you can uh, play smart. And of course, it would be uh, a tool or a card that you play with in politics, definitely. So Tarek al there, the Egyptian uh, minister of energy, essentially making it pretty plain that the idea of having that kind of energy independence will make them politically independent as well, to a certain degree at least, because over the last several years in particular, um, they've had to look to the UAE and Saudi Arabia in terms of creating a situation whereby they get cheaper energy, that their energy needs are fulfilled. But the idea that they could inevitably, and not in the too uh, far future, become an exporter of energy, a net exporter, that would really change the game in terms of the politics and regional dynamics as well. So a lot of kind of interesting conversations along the sidelines of this forum, Matt, but something that I think for the private sector in particular, at least a bit of positivity. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.